All right, hello and welcome to another Expert Inside interview. My name is John Golden from Sales Pop, online sales magazine and Pipeliner CRM, joining you from San Diego. And today I'm joined by Chris Kenny, who is over in New York, upstate New York in Rochester. How are you doing, Chris? Oh, doing really well. Yeah, and Chris is a business leverage expert, and he teaches coaches and consultants how to convert their services into high-end selling programs. And what we want to talk about today is, uh, it's that kind of uh, sticky conversation that often, you know, either entrepreneurs or businesses have about how much money they're earning and the pricing that they are, they are operating under. So what we want to talk about today is how to radically raise your fees and finally start charging high end. So Chris, just before we came on air, we were just having a quick, uh, a quick chat about, you know, having gone through this process myself about when, when, uh, you know, prices had to increase to reflect the value of, of a product. But a lot of people are very uncomfortable with making that move. What, what is it that keeps people in low pricing, when they're actually delivering value that is uh, outsizes their their pricing, I think they're they're making a decision um, in terms of you know what they think people will buy and what they think people will pay, you know. Um, and the problem with that is they're making that decision with their own belief system about money. So basically, if if you're a person that is in scarcity. Uh, about money, well, you're going to make a decision on how to price your services based on that scarcity when it comes to your price points. So if we're using our own belief system and going, oh, you know, nobody will pay that, even though the value is here, my gosh, we're massively sabotaging our results. And I just think when I, when I think value, I'm, I'm, what I'm wanting people to think about in our work is what's the lifetime value of the skill set? What's the lifetime value of the skill set? That is so incredibly important. And it's also remembering, because I'm primarily working with coaches and consultants mm -hmm. and, and people in service-based businesses. And it's, it's remembering that people are not paying for your time. That's another thing that's hugely significant. And it's remembering that um, employees get paid for time. You're no longer an employee, you're an entrepreneur. You're paid based on the value you bring to the marketplace. Yeah, no, I love that. I love that concept uh, because you're right. Is uh, as you know, a lot of consultants when they start off go through that whole process of oh, yeah, what should be, what should my hourly rate be? What will the, you know, what will the market sustain? I'm competing with a lot of people here. Maybe I should go a little lower. Whatever. But but I, I agree with you. I think most people start from that point of view of uh, charging for time as opposed to being able to sell, as you said, the lifetime value. And, and when somebody when somebody says, "Wow, you know, that's a lot of money," and somebody if somebody tried to break my rate down hourly, mm -hmm. I would say, I would literally say, "Are you paying me for my time?" <laughs> and they'll say, "Well, yes," and I will say, "No, actually, you're not." And I say it in a really good tone and in an empathetic tone, mm -hmm. like not to argue with them. <laughs> sure. But more, it's yeah. like what you're really paying me for is a result. Mm -hmm. And if if you're you're coming into my experience and you're wanting me to teach you, you know, how to sell a, a program for $15,000 or $25,000, you and I, we work together for 12 months and I teach you how to sell a program for 15K or 25K, you have that skill set for the rest of your lifetime right. business. That's worth hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of thousands of dollars. And look, if I can teach you how to do that in two weeks, it doesn't mean it's less valuable. Yeah. You still have the skill set. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And, and in nobody fact, would, nobody in, would argue yeah. with that. In fact, I should charge you more. What am I talking about? Like that. <laughs> hundred grand for the next two weeks. You know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> but it's like um, when you when you when you put it that way, it's in, in the, the key is you know, in those dialogues, the, the tonality is really important. You know, mm -hmm. I'm always empathetic when somebody's they're breaking me down by the hour. I, I'm empathetic, I understand why they're doing it, I don't get triggered by it. And I respond in an empathetic tone, but I do, I do explain that it's, it's an outcome that you're paying for, not time. And, and just coming back, it was an interesting thing that you said about the belief system. Uh, so w when you work with people, how do you help them uh, to overcome that belief system, you know, that they're not, you know, that they're not valuable enough, what they do isn't valuable enough, that they can't uh, command the kind of fees that they would like to, and that they actually, the value that they're creating warrants. 
Yeah, well, that, those beliefs, they're all coming from the subconscious mind. So, mm -hmm. you know, when you know that and you understand that, that's where the belief is being housed. It's being housed in the subconscious. So, like, one of the, one of the super simple things that you can do to start to rewire the subconscious mind is use a visualization practice. So if a person's sitting at, you know, 2,000, 3,000, and they want to sell something for 10,000, I'll put them in a visualization practice to start visualizing themselves selling it at 10K because the subconscious mind has no concept of time. So what ends up happening is when you start the visualization, the subconscious mind thinks you've already sold it at 10K, right? So that's mm -hmm. what takes place. The conscious mind will know that you haven't sold it at 10K. So what ends up happening is that creates something in the mind called structural tension, right? And structural mm -hmm. tension is actually responsible for desire. Mm -hmm. So what ends up happening is the desire to sell it at the higher price point starts to really rapidly increase the other thing that happens is in the mind when you start doing a visualization practice like this is it affects what's called your reticular activating system, which is the filter at the base of your mind, which um, decides what you're going to see. In other words, I, you know, we're getting about 2 million bits of information per second into right. our brain, right? But the mind can only handle about 150 bits of information per second. So there's a filtering process that's taking mm -hmm. place, right? Before you even, before thought even starts. So when you start to visualize and you're doing this on a regular basis, the things that you see in your world will be different. So you will start to see the things, the people, the resources that you need in order to allow yourself to step into the up level. So that's, that's like a really simple practice, you know, in a, in a, in a really short mm -hmm. period of time sure. that, that I can share here, like start visualizing it. And then you can even practice. So if you want to go to 10K, start practicing quoting 15K, like in front of the mm -hmm. mirror, right. 15K, 20K. <laughs> and then eventually what will end up happening is when you quote the 10, it's going to feel inexpensive because you've been practicing and conditioning right. yourself to quote 20 and visualizing quoting 20. So these are the types of things. Just we have to remember, where's the belief housed? It's housed in the subconscious. So if you don't activate the subconscious mind, the belief system is unlikely to shift. Mm -hmm. So in many ways, what you're saying is when you go through this process, I, that these, these, these people, these, these customers, they're already there. The opportunities are already there. It's just that right now you don't see them because you are filtering information in a different way. That is 100% correct. And you're a smart guy to be able to, to, to draw that from what I just said, because that is, and people hate that answer. When I tell them that the high, because everybody always says, Chris, where are the high ticket buyers? Like, mm. where are they? I'm like, they're in your experience. They're like, no, they're not. <laughs> and like, I promise you they are. Mm. They are in your experience, but you are not seeing them because of the lens and the belief system you're viewing the world through. I've had so many situations where I've sat down with individuals and one, one story comes really right to the forefront of my mind. I was literally on vacation in Bali. We were in Bali and I met this guy. We're sitting by the pool and we're in this conversation. Turns out he's a personal trainer, nutrition you know, coach, that type of thing. Mm -hmm. Had never sold anything for over a thousand bucks in his entire life, right? His, his um, spouse had just left the military. So her, her income was dropping off. He was, he was struggling, right? So we end up in this conversation about hiring me. So, in that situation, most people would sit there and go, this guy's broke. I'm going to offer him something for 1K or 2K. Yeah. He's broke, right? I don't have that belief system. Hmm. So I'm sitting there and I'm like, well, what's the best possible way to navigate this person from point A to point B? Well, it's one-to-one hmm. -one work and the best package is 12 months. So at that time, my rate was $60,000 for 12 months. Right. I quoted him 60K for 12 months, right? Mm -hmm. Son of a B, the guy bought it. <laughs> got, got a, got a $10,000 credit card, made his down payment, signed the contract. We started the work and I started teaching him how to make the money. And the guy worked with me for 12 months, paid me $60,000 $60, and then renewed. But that's what I mean. Most people yeah. would, would not put that recommendation in front of that person and they miss it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. No, I, I see. And again, I mean, part of it, as you said, I mean, it comes down to 
the, the your obviously your belief system, but your confidence in in what you're offering and the value you place upon yourself and upon your services. So we have a te- we have an awful tendency to devalue our own experiences of what we have to offer. We also often suffer uh, that imposter syndrome, like I'll. You know, maybe if I said to you, oh, you know, Chris, hire me for whatever amount of money. And then you say, okay. And then I go, oh my goodness, am, am I really, do I really have anything to offer? Am I really that good? And I second guess myself. So how do you help people overcome that imposter syndrome, lack of confidence, like second guessing themselves? Yeah, it happens. It happens in the journey. Listen, and it's, and again, the confidence is always going to come from doing, sure. right? Here, here's the problem. People want the confidence before they'll do the doing. <laughs> And it's not how it happens. You have to do the doing and then the confidence comes. There's no, there's no magic pill that I can hand a person and say, here, let me just get into your mind and rework these things. And now all of a sudden you're confident. You have to step into it and you have to do it. So what that basically means is you have to be willing to take the leap of faith. The way it happened for me was I had to charge the higher fee first. I charged the higher fee first and I got it. And then what happened was the confidence to deliver at that level came after the yes. Mm. It doesn't come before the yes. I grew into it after I got it, not so, before. And that's, the, that's where people get messed up. They want to feel confident first. You have to be willing to quote the fee, take the risk of quoting the fee, feel the imposter <laughs> syndrome. And then what happens is your delivery will shift. I mean, it immediately yeah. shifts. Your way of being shows up, you show up different. But here's the other thing that happens, John, your clients show up different. Mm. So you've got you showing up at a higher level and you've got them showing up at a higher level because the fee has gone up. And when you put those two together, boom, now you've got results. Well, right, because obviously uh, if I pay you the the large fee, uh, I'm going to make, darn sure that I am committed to it, that I'm 100% in, that I'm going to get my, my money's worth out of this. So uh, I, I can absolutely see that. And it's interesting you say, it's, it's like you, you, you charge it first and then you bring the confidence. Because it's almost like when the person says, yes, boy, you're, you're on the hook now. You gotta you're on up. the hook and, um, and that's where all your stuff will get triggered. But that's, mm-hmm. that's the, and that's where, you know, support, you're having support. Mm-hmm as you're walking through this is super important because yeah. that's, that's what'll happen. I remember, um, <laughs> this is a funny story. I remember having, I was working with a, a guy that was doing leadership consulting and he had a pitch to make. And so I, I helped him design his recommendation and he was going to charge $35,000 for this recommendation. It was this three phase thing he was doing. It was going to be 35 K. I looked at it, different belief system. I said, mm-hmm. look, the guy's name was Philip. I said, Philip, this is 35k per phase. So his the investment went from 35k to 105k, mm-hmm. right? So he was like, you know, pretty freaked out, but he went in and he took the leap of faith, you know, I taught him say this is how you do the presentation, here's how you're going to run it. So he went on in there and he did the presentation. I then got a phone call from him and that was like really freaked out and really upset, like if I dropped it to if I dropped it to 70k, I would have got it. If I just, I, all I had to, so he was upset and I was like, you can't, you can't go drop it. You can't do, why didn't you quote him 70 K in the first place? Well, you know, why all right. of a sudden have you gone down this amount of money? You, you'll lose all trust. So he's like, he was, you know, kind of back and forth and upset. This was like on a Monday or Tuesday. And then he booked a follow-up call for that Friday. So three days later, I get a call from him and he's, he says, Chris, oh my God, oh my God. He said, I just got a text message. Tomorrow's not a follow-up call. It's like, we're starting. Like they bought the program for $105,000. And he said, what I need from you is to teach me how to walk in and sit in their office and act like this happens all the time. <laughs> I, love, I love that. So we, just navigated them. we just navigated them through the meeting, but that's, that's what happens. People so massively undervalue. Um, what they're doing. And, um, but yes, you show up differently. They show up differently. It was kind of the one thing that when when I went through this, that I didn't really even think about because I was so Mm -hmm. focused on what the increase would do for me. Um, I didn't realize that my client results would actually massively increase. And that was, that was what happened. And then my reputation got really, really good. Uh, and then that just started the momentum and that was back in gosh, 2009. So Mm -hmm. it's a long time ago. 
Yeah, because I guess uh, for, uh, for the people who um, who hire you and that you know, making that kind of investment, as I said, you get that extra level of commitment on on their side because who wants to, and, and especially because when they see somebody as, as skillful and high value as yourself, you you kind of want to raise your game and kind of say, yeah, you know, I, I'm I'm worth your time. It's almost like a, a flip, right? I'm paying you, but I'm trying to convince you that I'm worth your time. Yeah, your your way of being it, it just creates a level of kind of, of accountability um, that mm -hmm. most people haven't experienced. So mm -hmm. there's there's shifts in how you're showing up. There's shifts in how you're thinking. Um, there's an immediate growth that takes place because you're committed at this level. Um, everything changes changes when you move from a want to to a have to. Yeah, everything shifts funny. when you go from a want to to a have to. So now you, you're not just wanting to make the money; you actually have to make the money. Right. And I love that bit about accountability because it's always interesting because most people's concept or, or yeah, we all go through this, you know, our idea of accountability is, is other people, <laughs> is other people being accountable. It's not holding ourselves accountable. That's very true. That's very true. But when, and when you step into something like this and, you know, you sign an agreement and you say, you know, I'm committed and I'm fully in, there's a shift and there's an accountability that's, that's new and it's unfamiliar and it's a really positive shift. And, and, and here's the thing, if it starts and it's not a positive shift, that's perfect right. because whatever gets triggered in that moment is the, the wound or the issue that you need to work through. And then you've got the support to actually work through that. And I think that's a that's a just another interesting point there because I'm not sure people always realize that they the triggers that they have or the baggage that they carry or the things that are holding them back. And to your point, maybe that is the starting point for some people. It's not to go from a to Z, it's go from A to B. It's like figure out the triggers, figure out the baggage, figure out what's holding you back from valuing, valuing yourself more. Yeah, and letting that whole bag, that whole list of baggage, letting it get triggered. Because when it's triggered, that's an opportunity for healing. So the right. trigger is actually a really good thing. You know, if somebody, you know, hits a, a big, you know, money block during our work together that is perfect because now we can mm -hmm. help navigate through the money block and right. the thinking that's associated with the money block so the triggers is actually a really good thing if a person starts in a program and they they start here and then they dip that's good because it's in the dip that the breakthrough happens and we need mm -hmm. the dip in order to create yeah. the breakthrough and then on the other side you know there's this rapid explosion of of business and oh my gosh all of a sudden they get it yeah. And how often are you surprised by the things that trigger people or the things that are holding them back? Or do you often see some some commonalities? I think there's commonalities. Um, I, I don't know. I've been doing this a long time, so I think it would be hard to surprise me <laughs> at this point <laughs> um, after this amount of time. Um, but it is. It's common. It's the common stuff. It's sending money out. People have a negative trigger uh, with sending money out. Um, mm -hmm. People have a huge trigger around being liked. So mm -hmm. usually, you know, if, if somebody's going to navigate through a price increase, there's going to be a part of them that will trigger this whole need. Uh, people aren't going to like me. People aren't going to accept me. Um, so that gets triggered. So there's navigating that. This, it's, an, it's an emotional process to walk sure. people through. Um, this is not a, it's not, it's more emotional than practical. I mean, without mm -hmm. question, because they have to be able to, um, sit in that price point and then when when somebody's first starting a common thing to happen so say you raise your rates significantly yeah. I would fully expect that the first time you quote that rate the person that you quote it to is going to have an adverse reaction to it right because that you know there's ego that's taking place so your current ego your current sense of self right is very comfortable at the current price point so your current sense of self is going to fight for its life so that would make total sense that you'd manifest somebody that would cause you to doubt the whole process, right? Because that's the ego going, don't do it. What are you out of your mind? It's never going to work, but yeah. that's the time for the breakthrough. So the mm -hmm. work is staying the course in spite of the adversity as it shows up and not quitting because that's where mm -hmm. the breakthrough is. And obviously, and, and, and as you say, like recognizing that this is what's happening is that you're, this is what's manifesting. This is what's showing up. And these are the reasons why, as opposed to going, oh yeah, there, see, told you there's the proof point that person pushed back. I should, I've got to go back to being cheap. 
Right. And it's, yeah, it's overgeneralizing. Like when that happens, you, you, you will, I always tell people, you're probably going to manifest a few people that are going to try to pull you back. And are you committed? And they're like, yeah, I'm totally in. And then when they show up, we go, yeah, there they are. You know, what are you going to do about it? Yeah. Yeah. Cause we are, we are experts as humans is taking one single data point and often the, the most recent one and extrapolating that to uh, come up with a whole like, massively overgeneralizing it yeah, exactly I mean, it's, a huge, yeah. it's a huge error but it does happen <laughs> especially you know when that when that situation generates a whole heck of a lot of emotion because yeah. you know that's what would happen if somebody gets mad at you and you get this huge emotional response because somebody got mad um oh my gosh you know now you're creating this imprint on the subconscious mind because of that emotion that emotional yeah. experience but it's not usually that difficult you know if people know that hey i might manifest a couple of no's in this situation and i just have to navigate through it and i've got to work on my skill set and i've got to work on my belief and they're fully committed to staying the course breaking through this can happen in 30 to 60 days if somebody's like fully fully committed and fully in and they're getting opportunities to show up and do enrollment and do and, and, you know if they've got leads coming in and they're having opportunity opportunities to sell 30 days 60 days I would say 90 days is very common in terms of getting it, getting it done. Now, here's the next thing that happens. When a person raises their rates and then they get the rate for the mm -hmm. first time, what then happens that needs to be navigated is they will unconsciously go into what I call I've arrived energy. Oh, okay. So now there's, and, and this is what happens. It, it, it comes into their tonality on their sales calls. Their mm. tone just gets a little, little teensy weensy bit arrogant. And they'll, they'll, always, they'll always deny it because they'll right, get the right. big sale and then they'll have a slump, right? And then they're mm. like, why am I slumping? And I'm just like, we got to check your tone. So I'll have them record. So I'll have them record a sales call or two. And then they'll deny it. They'll say, no, nothing's wrong with my tone. Everything's amazing. <laughs> and then we play the recordings back and they go, oh my God, my tone. <laughs> I yeah, sound yeah. arrogant. I'm like, yes. <laughs> Because tone is unconscious. So yeah. the sale happens and then we have to navigate making sure that they stay humble, um, that they stay driven, they stay in service, and they don't, mm -hmm. they don't start making it about the money, uh, all of those things. Yeah, and it's fascinating how as humans we can flip so quickly, isn't it? That you know, we can go from being very you know reticent and humble, then we get a little data point that says, okay, well done, I'm investi investing in you. And you're suddenly like, oh, I'm king of the world now. Yeah, I'm king now. <laughs> And, I, and I've seen it so many times and nobody, again, nobody loves hearing it, but yeah. you know, that's why I have people record because then we can just play it back and we can say, look, hear this. And they go, oh my God, it is happening. And then we can, we can fix that. Yeah. Well, listen, uh, Chris, this has been fantastic. Like so much good information here. And, and I would say to everybody, um, I have, I have worked with coaches in, uh, in myself in the past, and I really do think that people should consider this because as I say, ad nauseum, uh, you probably invest in your hobby. You probably invest a lot of money in your hobby, whether, whether it's golf, you might have a golf coach or whatever. Uh, how much money do you invest in your own professional development and what puts bread on the table? And I think that's something you should think about. And there's never a better time than during this period of, of enforced self-reflection to start thinking about where you're putting your money. <laughs> like it, enforced self-reflection. That's pretty much true. <laughs> yeah. um, before we go, all of Chris's information will be below the video, but Chris, do tell people a little bit more about yourself and what you do. Yeah, well, our, our main area work of work is helping people in the coaching and consulting industry position, package, and sell high ticket programs. So programs 10K, 15K, 25K. We've got clients selling at 50K and 100K. So if you're a person that wants to learn that, you can certainly find us. The place, the best place to find me though is on Facebook. So I have a private mm -hmm. Facebook group. It's called Sales Mastery Inner Circle. It's a private Facebook group, obviously on Facebook. Put that into the search bar, hop on in. You'll have to answer three questions. After you answer those three questions, you'll be led into that group. We do a live show inside of that group every single Thursday at one o'clock. So tons of value, tons of resources. It's all complimentary. So you can find me Sales Mastery Inner Circle on Facebook. Perfect. All right. My name is John Golden, Sales Pop Online, Sales Magazine, Pipeliner CRM. See you all for another expert interview really soon. Thank you. Mm -hmm.